uh, yesterday we saw why Krishna, why Arjuna asked the question that uh, sannyas and tyag. What is sannyas and what is tyag? That question why he asked. So anybody would like to explain why why Arjuna asked this question? Sanya, out of 18th chapter, why does he ask like this? Yes, somebody. Yes, Mandar Guru. <clears throat> Proji, because uh, Krishna has already explained about uh, the uh, Dan Tapa Yagya in 17th chapter, and then Arjun got this one to confirm why because the sannyasis uh, and the tyagis. So sannyasis they give up the activity itself totally all the activities they give up so and tyagi also looks similar so he just want to know that what is the difference between a sannyasi and tyagi because look, both look to be similar nice and also another another second second region also is what is the second one yeah pre arjun Ru is here he's answering yeah he's true in the seventeen chapter it was told that uh... The, 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 sums of his discussion towards the end. So then Krishna starts answering by saying what is sannyas and what is that? Kamya nam karma nyasam. So giving up the kamya karma altogether is called um, sannyas. And sannyas does not give up nitya karma. And this, another this tag is they do kamya karma but they give up the fruits of the action. So they, they engage themselves in the kamya karma but the fruits of the action there, that they are tagging. And then towards Krishna, after two or three verses, he says that both are more or less same. Sanyasi and tyagi. He says both are same thing only. So, because Krishna is an advocate of not giving so much of the action rather than the fruit of the action. He, throughout the Bhagavad Gita, that is his stress. You will always find. That's why he's telling. And sanyasis are the, are the gyanis. They are the people who give up action itself. And Krishna says their path is really troublesome. The sannyasis, impersonal gyanis. So this we heard, discussed. And then 18.6, I think we heard yesterday. And Krishna says that this yajya dana tapa karma na tyajyam karya mevatar. One should not give them up. And they pavan and emanishan and all this activity there. They, they purify even hurtful people. And so they, are, they need not be given up. Okay. Then 18.6. This will result. Etani api tu karmani. Sangam tatwa falanicha. Sangam tatwa falanicha. Karta vianiti me partha. Karta vianiti me partha. Nishitam matamutamam. Nishitam matamutamam. Stilling etani api karmani, all these activities. Sangam tatwa falanicha. One should give up the attachment to the fruit and should do it because it has to be done. Kartabya. Kartabya. Kartabya niti. Because this is considered to be kartabya. Has to be done. That's why one should do it. Why one should do it? Because it has to be done. That's why one should do it. And then, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. Nishchitam matam uttam. This is my. Nishchitam me matam. May means it is my opinion. Some people they say that they should be given up. Some people they say that they should never be given up. But my opinion is this that one should do it 
without attachment to the fruit and it should do it because it has to be done. One should not one should not feel that there is no need to do it or you know once one should not feel also that it should not be done. One should feel, one should just should do it because it has to be done. It is duty. That's what this is my opinion. This next step. Yeah, somebody can read this translation. Yeah, these actions must be done. Uh, these actions must be done, but without the misconception of being the doer and without longing for results. Mm -hmm. This is my final opinion. Yeah. Can read giving up the misconception. Giving up the misconception. Oh, sorry. Giving up the misconception of being the doer, Sangam Tyaktva, and also giving up the quest for results, Palani. One should perform those actions. Giving up the idea of being the doer and giving up seeking results is Tyaga, and this is also called Sanyasa. So Krishna is summarizing his opinion. Yeah. Niyatasya tu sannyasaha. Niyatasya tu sannyasaha. Karmano no papadhyate. Karmano no papadhyate. Moha tasya parityagas. Moha tasya parityagas. Tamasa parikirtitaha. Tamasa parakirtitaha. The seven, eight, and nine. Krishna will tell about different, different renouncer and their. In what mode they are renouncing and how their renunciation is categorized depending upon the modes. This is what Krishna has been already discussed in Yajna Dhyana Tapa also. Because Yajna Dhyana Tapa, these three are in modes, and accordingly, the renounce the anybody who renounces them, the their renunciation are also in three modes. So, how they are in three modes now is Explain first in Tamagun and then Rajagun and then Satogun. Renunciation in Tamagun, renunciation in Rajagun, renunciation in Satogun. And one thing he is telling that a person should not feel himself as a doer. So, whenever there is an activity, this Yajna, Dana, Tapa, there is a sense of doership. So, then he will explain, explain about these mentalities, doership mentality. And then how there are different, different factors which lead to particular type of result. Five types of factor. That also he will explain. Don't think that you are the sole doer. You are the prime doer. There are other five factors involved. And he will be explain them. He will explain them also. These five type of... So, and then the instruments which we use, the senses. And then another important factor in action is called knowledge. Without knowledge, one cannot perform any action. So that also you will explain the knowledge in different different modes. So now till almost 40 verses, till 40, you will be explaining all these things in different different modes. This, why, why in this section the modes are being stressed so much? Because bhakti is beyond the modes. And here the jnana section, lot of information regarding the modes has to be given. Whenever there is jnana, you have to understand that the discussion about modes will definitely come. And uh, that is to explain that why Krishna speaks these six chapters of knowledge, Gyan, because he knows that all people will not be able to practice devotional service. And also my devotees, while practicing sadhana bhakti, they will get affected by the modes. So none of us can say that we are beyond the modes. We are not affected by the modes. So to, to deal with them, we have to know about the how the modes they act. Like that. So that's why he is explaining in these two chapters, 17 chapter and 18 chapter, at a great length about all these factors, action, knowledge, and uh, intelligence in different different modes. That's the uh, his motivation behind explaining these things now. So till 40, all the same theme will go on different different modes, and then action, the factor of action, all these things he will explain. Yeah, you can read this for translation. Vibhu uh, Prabhu. It is not recommended to give up Nitya Karmas, even for the sannyasis. 
rejection ar arising from ignorance of scripture ends in ignorance so this is the translation given by uh, ishwana chakravarti thakur but shri prabhupad that we'll see shri prabhupad translation also you can read i'm taking this because uh, vishwana chakravarti thakur the technical differences will be very clear when you uh, see direct uh, translation of vishwana chakravarti thakur yeah you can see this starting with description of the three types of starting with the description of the three types of tyaga the lord here describes tamasik tyaga given up, giving up daily activities niyatasya karmana is Did not recommended ha uh, yeah. is not recommended to reject the, the nitya karmas out of ignorance of the meaning of scriptures mohat is called tamasik tyaga The sannyasis can reject kamya karma since they are not obligatory, but nitya karmas are not to be rejected. That is the su suggestion of the word to. The result of such tamasik tyaga is in ignorance instead of attainment of the knowledge, which was the very goal in rejecting the nitya karma. Yeah. So, when somebody gives up this karma, the purpose is to attainment of knowledge. so that is called niskama karma yog that should lead to gyan yog if you see i just share this one. okay let's complete this two three verses then dukham iti eva yatat dukham iti eva yat yat karma eh one minute जो What is the renunciation in Rajoga? It's explained here. Yeah. You can read this. Chandra Bhushan Tiwari Prabhu, can you read? Yes. Anyone who gives up prescribed duties as troublesome or out of fear of bodily discomfort is said to have renounced in the mode of passion. Such action never leads to the elevation of renunciation. Yeah. So somebody who gives up because his body is going to be in trouble, that is called renunciation in rajogun. But in case of renunciation in tamogun, you can see that if you one gives up out of illusion, because out of sheer ignorance one man gives up. He is not doing because he is not, you know, he is in ignorance. He does not know. So then that is called ignorance renunciation in tamogun. that is tamasa but this one he knows that it has to be done but he is thinking that this boy my body will be in trouble and kaya place then that is renunciation in rajo so this person is sensible he is he is uh, basically he is looking after body the comfort so that is called renunciation in rajo uh, like uh, Nitya karma is one should not give up because in one more that have to he has to get up in the morning he has to go and take bath and uh, do all the activities because generally this this uh, activities yajna dana tapa all this involves lot of austerity also tapa itself is also the name, meaning of tapa itself is austerity so when somebody gives up gives up gives them up thinking that you no know, body will be in trouble that is in rajogun the person is in rajogun rajogun is renunciation. And one does not get the fruit of the renunciation. Although he has renounced, it is he is not he cannot expect any. He, he will get negative effect. That is nitya karma. So like nitya karma should never be given. If one does nitya karma, the the result may not be very glorious. One may get some result, but no, not may not be very glorious. 
But if one does not do the nitya karma, the results are going to be very suffering. One will end up in suffering. So this is now renunciation in Sattva. Karya miti eva yat karma. Karya miti eva yat karma. Niyatam kriyate arjuna. Niyatam kriyate arjuna. Sangam tetva phalam chaiva. Sangam tetva phalam chaiva. Dhatyaga sattvika. Mataha. Dhatyaga sattvika mataha. So, yes, brother, Arjuna sattvika. I'll just explain this one and then I'll take your question. So now, Karya Mithi, he does the work. This Karya means this Yajna, Dhana, Tapa, all these things. He does them and he does them. He does not renounce. He's doing it. He's, he's involved in the action. But he is not attached to the fruit and he is not considering them himself to be the doer. Sangam Tattva means he is not considering himself to be the doer. And Falam also, Sangam from, from the fruit also, he is not uh, attached to the fruit. When he is not doing these two things, then he is actually, he, he is renouncing the fruit, is considered to be the renouncer in Sattva, although he is involved in action. Like that. Now, yes, probably you can. Arjun Sharpa, speak. Here, uh, the activities that are to be renounced, I mean, in all the verses, are we talking about only these three things? Uh, uh, charity, sacrifice, uh, and then the other one. The all the three things that uh, Krishna yeah, is talking there are, about. There are like, uh, like Snan, Sandhya, and then... Uh, but, but does not talk about like eating and all these things. They are uh, like having food. They, but it seems to be Nitya Karma. Right? So when Krishna is saying what is to be renounced, is it talking about the Kame Karmas or is it talking about the Nitya Karmas? No, he is not talking about Nitya Karma. He is talking about Kame Karma. Kame Nitya Karma. Karma has never to be given up. Naimitika Karma and Nitya Karma, all this. Naimitika Karma also comes. Like you have three accents, no? Nitya Karma, Naimitika Karma, and Kamyagarma. So, when Krishna is talking about, he is talking about uh, Naimitika and uh, Kamyagarma. And Yajna Dana, basically Yajna Dana Tapa Karma. Yajna Dana Tapa and Karma. Karma means like certain activities like Snana, Ahara, food, Ahara. Sometimes he says about uh, Sanyasi does not eat fire. So, that eating fire is cooking actually. Cooking. So, all these activities. To keep the karma means to keep what the activities that are meant to keep the body and soul together. All these things. Okay. The Vedic injunctions, whatever uh -huh. is there in the in the Vedas, there are many activities, offering pinder to the forefathers. This is also karma. Or doing vibha yagya, getting your sons married. If you have a daughter, then it's your sole responsibility to, to offer the kanyadan. So all these activities is considered in the karma. So, you have to give your daughter in marriage. Now, under what category you have to put? It is Kamya Karma or it is Nitya Karma or it is Nemitika Karma. It is Karma. So, it has to be done. One has to give his daughter in marriage to, to someone. So, all these activities. And one has to offer oblations to the forefather. One has to invite guests to his, to his house. That all these things, Atiti Satkar, so all these activities is discussed. So, what exactly falls in Kamya Karma provision then? Yeah. So, Kamya Karma is like Vibha. This can come under Kamya Karma. Doing, doing this, uh, like you want to make a house. That is Kamya Karma. Now, that is called Griha Praves. That is Kamya Karma. Don't know. Because there is a shade. You need a house because you are a grihastha. But now, what type of house has to be there? Which place and all? All this, there is no, no restriction in the Vedas. It, it is solely dependent on, on your desire. So that is called Kamya Karma. Now you just, Lord, like Lord Shiva, you just doesn't have any house. Some grihastha, they have very simple house. Okay, maybe make it as simple as possible. But some people, okay, let the house be a little lucrative. Now, Vedas, they don't restrict on, on that, those things. That's why they fall under Kamya Dharma. Okay, fine. When, when there, is, there is a strict description given, explained everything, then that is Nitya Dharma and Naimitya Dharma. 
when there is no boundary on how far you can go, and then there is no detailed description, then that is called Dhamnagar. Making a house, or they, they are needed actually. So, so when Viva, you can come under uh, Kitya. Who? Viva, Viva. You can't give it up. No, not necessarily. Viva is no, that's Viva will be coming under Khamnagar. All the Soda so Upachars, there they are, this Dasavidha Samskar, they come under Naimitika Karma. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Taryamitiyeva yat karma. Taryamitiyeva yat karma. Niyatam kriyate arjuna. Niyatam kriyate arjuna. Sangam dyaktva falani falam chaiva. Sangam dyaktva falam chaiva. Satyaga satviko mataha. Satyaga satviko mataha. Okay. Translation, please. Darshan Vendere Guru. Yes, sir. Translation, O Arjuna, when one performs his prescribed duty only because it ought to be done and renounces all material association and all attachment to the fruit, his renunciation is said to be in the mode of goodness. Yeah. So prescribed duty is being spoken here. That that represents to the Swabhava, which one has achieved, attained from this because of his association with the three modes or because of his involvement with with Kamya Karma and Nitya Karmas. So there will be some Swabhava. And accordingly, the, the prescribed duties are there. Somebody is a father, he has a son, then it is his duty to raise the child. So all these things. And also there is inclination concerning the Varnashram, the Varna and Ashram. So that those activities are considered to be prescribed duty. So doing this activity, and this is this is explained for the for the for the Niskam Karma Yogis. It is not so much for the devotees. The Krishna is not talking about, about bhakti here. If you see this, I'll just share this my screen. If you look into this diagram here. Now this diagram explains about about uh, uh, about these uh, three yogas. This name Niskam Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga, all these things which Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita. So below this circle is the is the animalistic life, is the Vikarmis, the sinful people. Below this green zone, below here, all these people are uncivilized, and they are they are the people who are not under Vedic fold. Now inside this, you are seeing this Karmis and VA. VA is Varnashram. Those who follow the Varnashram. The Karmis, they just follow the Varnashram and they are the Karmi. They have desire to enjoy the fruit and they, they have a desire to rise up to the heaven. The, the, the Surga Kamis. So they fall under this category, this, this section. And from here, if somebody gets an association with a pure devotee, like Srila Prabhupada and his movement and a pure devotee or a devotee, then he will enter into this sadhana bhakti compartment. He will enter into this sadhana bhakti compartment. So he, if he enters into sadhana bhakti, then you don't have to see what is his prescribed duty, all these things, you know, all those things which are discussed in the Niskama Karma Yoga section. You know, here you don't have to see those things. You just have to, you know, do the Navabhida bhakti. He has to practice them. Although he has desire, although he is not freed from desire, he has a lot of material desire. So all these people, they have material desire. In the, inside this green circle you are seeing, they have material desire. All of these people. But these people are coming, going into the right way. On the right side, these people are the sadhana bhakti practitioners. They, they have desire. They are not, yet they are under the modes. Definitely they have desire. And, uh, but they are practicing sadhana bhakti. And here on the left side, those karmis who will come in touch with the impersonalist sadhus. Mahantastu Samachitta Prasanta, the Prabhupada explains that there are two types of transcendentalists. One is the Gyanis 
those who are after impersonal liberation and those who are bhaktas who are after personal as association with the Lord. They are bhaktas. So if you come in touch with the bhakta sadhus, the devotee sadhu, you will enter from on, on the right side, sadhana bhakti side. And if you come in touch with the Sankaracharya's followers, my my these are Gyanis, those who are after Brahma Jyoti, then you will enter into this Niskama Karma Yoga section. Niskama Karma Yoga section, then all these things, the Sohava, prescribed duties, and then detachment from the fruits of the action, and just doing it as a matter of duty, all these things will follow here in this NK, NKY, that is Niskama Karma Yoga. And if if one does this sadhana, Niskam Karma Yoga Shakshan, and then keeps himself in Satyogun and being freed from the desire to enjoy the fruit, then one will develop knowledge and detachment. Knowledge. So then if knowledge, he will enter into this left side, this blue tunnel you are seeing up. That will that is called Jnana Yoga Shakshan. That section is called Jnana Yoga. I did not get time to write it. I was just making it. So this is Jnana Yoga Shakshan. Then one will enter into Jnana Yoga. So the criteria to enter into the Jnana Yoga is, is detachment. Is detachment. This the end that to enter into this tunnel, jnana yoga section is detachment. Detachment from all that is material. This is very strong for needed. Krishna says that where all these things are there, this is there in Uddhav Gita. In Uddhav Gita, Krishna says that that uh, one who is who is fit to practice jnana yoga. He says that it is it is detachment. When somebody gets detachment from all that is material, then one becomes qualified to practice jnana yoga. But here, this sadhana bhakti side, you are seeing this blue tunnel raising up. This is the pure devotional service. Shuddha bhakti. Now, what is the criteria to enter into this pure devotional service? Jiva Goswami explains it is Shraddha. Shraddha. And in Krishna also explains that in, uh, in Uddhav Gita. That it is the Shraddha by which the qualification needed Adhu Shraddha. Then we will enter into pure devotional service. Then the pure devotional seeing things means it has three sections. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and then Prema Bhakti. The goal is, the topmost goal is Prem. That is attaining the love of God. But here on the left side there is Niskama Karma Yogi. The, their criteria to enter into Jnana Yoga, you know, surpassing the Niskama Karma Yoga is, is detachment. Complete detachment. Then that detachment from all that is not said will enable one to practice Jnana Yoga and by practicing this Jnana Sadhana, they will reach their highest destination that is the impersonal realization. This is there. This is how it is being explained. So this diagram explains the whole section of... Uh, so, so you should not combine Niskam Karma Yoga. We should not... We are Sadhana Bhakti side. Like yesterday Prabhuji was asking Arjun Sarthi Prabhu, what's, what, how to find out what's our prescribed duty and all this. We don't have to worry about these things. Because this, these are the people, NKY people, they will worry about Miskam Karma Yogi. They are prescribed duty, they have to strictly stick to it and then, you know, be detached from the fruit and Vivikta Desa Sevitva, Maratir Jana Samsade, they have to live in solitude and then, you know, do their sadhana and they have to save themselves from this sensory attachment in this world. And they have mostly this NKY people have to live away from the, you know, in the family and all these things. They cannot live with the family and practice Niskam Karma. It is very difficult. That it is it's, it is not so easy to practice Niskam Karma of living with homely setup and all these things. To, to study the Vedanta and all this. that. They have to give up home. That's why Krishna says, Aratir Jama. Divikta Desa Sevitvam, Aratir Jama Samsudhi. He says that in the Sadhana of Niskam Karma. And then one will get complete detachment. One will complete detachment. Then he will practice Gyan Yoga. Very strictly the Gyan Yoga section he will practice and then he will Achieve, achieve the impersonal. Now Bhagavatam explains about second and third and explains all these things. So this is the section. So we should not worry about this zone, left zone. Because we are here in Sadhana Bhakti side. We are, it's not that we don't have desire. We also have desire. We also have uh, we, we are affected by the modes. But nevertheless, we are practicing here Guni Bhuta Bhakti. That is the that is the Bhakti in Rajogun, Tamagun and Sattogun. So if our Shraddha becomes very strong and if we enter into this pure devotional service, because beyond this comes pure devotional service, that is Jnana Karma, Anya Vila Sita Sunyam, no more other desire, then 
will will surpass this green green zone and enter into the pure devotional service platform. And if you practice pure devotional service, then all the links will follow. Ado, Sraddha, Anartha Nibriti, and all these things will follow. Anartha Nibriti, that is the Sukrututha, Duskrututha, Anartha, all this Anartha will, will, will remove. And then the Bhajan then will achieve Nishtha stage, then Asar, Asakti, and then Bhav, and then Prema. This is how the whole thing is. The whole Bhagavad Gita will just understand these three things. Then all wherever Krishna is speaking, what you will understand, he is talking about what zone. And right now we are situated in what zone. So we don't have to worry about where are we and what we are supposed to do. Because we will understand that you know Krishna is talking this verse for this people. And we are here. Not that all the slokas are spoken for all people. Like that. So we have to know Krishna is talking about what section particularly. This 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 diagram will make it very clear about different type of yoga which Krishna is talking. Now you have a question. Yes. Uh, Karma Yogi, uh, he has some attachment to the activity work, but he is not attached to the fruit of the. Yeah. And eventually, when it develops uh, detachment, then you will enter into gyan yoga. Activity also, then you will enter into gyan yoga. But Nishkam Karyogi necessarily, uh, he may, uh, so if he has developed detachment from the fruit of the work, mm -hmm. so does he offer the fruit of the work to Krishna? Or? No, no, no. If he offers the fruit to, then he will come into sadhana bhakti. That will be bhakta. Then what did he, what did no, he, 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 he Why? Yes. Very good question. Our Prabhu has asked that then, you know, Niskam Karmayogi, how does he, with what criteria he offers? He offers, there are many reasons why, why he offers, why the Niskam Karmayogi offers the fruit. There are many reasons. One reason is that he wants purification. He knows that if I enjoy the fruit, this is very deadly. He, he wants purification. Or he knows that it has to be offered to Lord Vishnu. Vishnu has to be offered. Because it is there in the scriptures. You just offer. He is not having the love. He, if he offers out of love, oh Lord Vishnu, let me offer it. Then he comes into this, this side, Sadhana Bhakti side. He will follow the Sadhana Bhakti means. But he is not, he is not having that understanding. Why? Why he is not having that understanding? Because he has not associated with pure devotees. He has associated with Gyanis Sadhus. They chant the Vishnu mantras, the mantras that because if they know that Vishnu will be this. They will chant Om Kesavai Namo Om Narayana Namo to purify it. Mm -hmm. We chant Om Kesavai Namo because it is Krishna's name. Mm -hmm. But he will chant Krishna. He will to purify his paraphernalia. He will purify the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the things which he is using. If to purify them, he will chant. So he knows that now I am going to sit this asana. Om Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. He will purify it. Like that. So to purify to, to or his own yeah. So all this the goal is not out of love. You know, we from the very beginning, because you have associated with sadhu, there is an element of love. So that's when you fall in the category of sadhana bhakti. But they are niskam karmi. So there are many reasons. He is out of fear for the result. He knows that if I will enjoy, I will suffer. So I have to, I should not touch the fruit. Why? That is niskam karmi. There are many other reasons also. Yes, Prabhuji, you asked us before. Yes, Prabhuji. Oh, yes, uh, Bhuji, as we hear many times, like um, there will be not a single leaf can be moved without God's permission. If that is true, then how our karma means how our karma will be affect our next life and how the karma fall will be created. Then if it, it's mm -hmm. already if we are doing something, it's already God sanctioned as it's been as per that thing. Like uh, not a single leaf can be moved without permission. If that is true. This 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 thing will come now, just after two three verses. These okay. things will come out. Of course, already you might have read it in the in the fifth chapter, and also in the thirteenth chapter. But now again, the same discussion will come. We will discuss this thing. Yeah. Uh, Prabhupada makes a very beautiful statement in the purport. You can read prescribed duties. Purport. Prescribed duties must be performed with 
this mentality one should act without attachment for the result he should be disassociated from the modes of work a man working in krishna consciousness is a factory does not in a factory does not associate himself with the work of the factory nor with the, the workers of the factory nor, nor with the, the workers of the factory yeah. propa is explaining that the devotee is those who are working in the factory sometimes sometimes devotee say that the devotee who are going to factory now they should not receive brahman initiation because they are going and working in the factory but propa is clearly mentioning here that although they are working in the factory they are not associated with the factory or the the workers of the factory they are just doing it just doing it out of i'm talking about the devotees they are just doing it out of because they know uh, i'm supposed to do to raise my children family into krishna consciousness but my sole activity is to practice krishna consciousness and chant the glories of the lord go to the temple today in the factory also he is thinking that i went the it will be four o'clock i leave today there is a vishak in the evening and then so many things are there programs are there so he's the art is completely soaked in krishna so that he is not associating with the factory like that so this is how is being explained propa is clearly telling in the in the purport so he simply works for krishna because of, and then when he gives up the result for krishna he is acting transcendently so giving of this result so when somebody propa is talking about which section now we are talking about the right side people who are like our category this those who are doing this sadhana bhakti about them he is doing the activity and he is offering the fruits of that action to krishna out of love so that is coming under the section of bhakti but when somebody does this activities and then gives it up out of out of uh, anything other than devotion because of fear because it has to be done or because of the fear of the consequence or or purification of the heart so if he is doing out of fear it is tamoguni he is doing out of uh, achieving something higher it is rajoguni or he is doing out of purification for elevation to for liberation he is satu so all these things will come into the category of niskam karne so yeah like that okay yes shekhar prabhu okay. questions today <laughs> Prabhuji, is there a uh, Prabhuji, is there a possibility that, that even in uh, uh, sadhana bhakti stage, uh, the devotee may act out of uh, fear? He may perform uh, sadhana bhakti. Yeah, then uh, then then it will be tamaguni bhakti. Uh, then it will be tamaguni bhakti. There is possibility. Yeah. Clear, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. उंड Uh, Devi Prasad, bro. It is an intelligent announcer, situated in the mood of goodness, neither hateful of inauspicious work nor attached to auspicious work, has no doubts about work. So one who is not attached to auspicious work and that and not averse to inauspicious work. then he is called uh, then he has no doubt about work uh, actually doubt means what there is doubt and knowledge to know to 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 know that i know about these things is considered to be knowledge and to not to know about something is ignorance and doubt means one does not know but he thinks that he knows that is called doubt So, if Krishna will explain now, istam and istam and misra. Nahi deha prita sakyam. Nahi deha prita sakyam. Tatum karmaniya sheshata. Tatum karmaniya sheshata. Yastu karma phalat tyagi. Yastu karma phalat tyagi. Na tyagi tiya vidhiyate. 
तो त्या गीत या भीती या ते no he is telling that the the condition soul a person who is living within this body can never give up work completely all together even in a very advanced stage he says he elsewhere also he has already spoken that even in even swabhavastu pad pravartate that is that is look if somebody remembers he says that uh, uh, you know you know even the intelligent of people they act as per the swabhava and that it is not so easy to give up the work nigraha kim nigraha kim karishesh yes there is a nigraha kim karishesh there is shloka in third chapter i think ha uh, start tatva vittu mahabahu tatva vittu mahabahu guna karma vibhagasah next kya guna gune shobhata iti mata nahi nahi it is be 33 सदृशिंग चेष्टते स्वस्य प्रकृते ज्ञानवान अपि इवन ज्ञानवान इवन द ज्ञानीस यू सी द लेफ्ट साइड द सेक्शन द ज्ञानीस दे आल्सो डोंट गिव अप वर्क एंड दे ही सेइंग सो दैट इज द दैट इज द नित्य कर्म बेसिकली दे डोंट गिव अप दे डोंट गिव अप एंड देन डेफिनेटली सम सम शेड्स ऑफ सम शेड्स ऑफ डिजायर इज डेफिनेटली देयर सो ठाकुर त्यागी Uh, yeah therefore therefore actions ordained by scripture should not be given up it is not possible for one with a body to give up activities so, uh, sakyam is used for the proper word sakhyani the word has already uh, the lord has already said that not for a moment uh, can the person remain without doing action एडवांस्ड souls they also act why they act krishna has given the example of janak he said that all these people they act to set an example although they are not bound to work they are not forced to work but still they work why they act to set an example for others and the others those who are there they definitely they have to work so now the next shloka krishna talks about the how we act and what about the fruits of the action he explains so after having explained about the renunciation some different different type and he said that how renunciation is not very congenial one has to act but one has to renounce what the fruit and detach from the fruit of the action that's what is being krishna's stress then he is talking about the fruits anishtam ishtam misram cha anittam ittam misram cha trividham karmana phalam त्रिविधम कर्मण फलम भवति अत्यागिनां प्रत्य भवति अत्यागिनां प्रत्य नतु सन्यासिनां क्वचित नतु सन्यासिनां क्वचित ही सेज दो जो आर नॉट त्यागी हु आर अटैच्ड टू द फ्रूट दे आर एंटाइटल्ड टू दिस थ्री टाइप ऑफ फ्रूट अनिष्ट इष्ट अनिष्ट बट दो जो आर त्यागी दो जो आर सन्यासीस दो जो आर 
simply doing out of duty and they are not attached to the fruit, they are not entitled to this type, three type of fruit. So what are the three type of fruit? Anishtam, Ishtam and Nisram. Anishtam means hellish, means it is like inauspicious. And Ishtam means heaven. They go to the heaven and uh, come because there is definitely karma is there and the karma, if it is done, one can, if it is not successful, one might end up in heaven. Or if his Niskam Karma Yoga is very strong, very successful, then he will proceed and enter into the Gyan Yoga section. But for others who are not very advanced, for them these three results are spoken. What are they? Anishta, Ishta and Misra. So Misra means it is like mixed. And uh, Ishta means eh, like uh, heaven, heavenly delight. And Anishta is hell is suffering. All these things are for who? For one who is attached to the fruit. For them. Basically, basically this, this karma yoga, karma, karma gandhi people, for them, those who have desire, this, this, uh, the lower thing in that green, which I had shown, that people, those people. Not for so much about the niskam karma yoga. Yeah, you can read this. Dhairavan Ram Prabhu. Those who do not renounce in the prescribed way, get results in the form of hellish suffering, heavenly enjoyment or human birth in the next life. This is not so for one who renounces in the correct manner. Yeah, this is not for those who renounce. That is the Niskan Karma, not for them. Okay. And uh, why the fruits are like this? Why and why the person becomes attached to the fruit? Because he feels himself with the doer. He is not Sangam Tektwa Falanicha. Sangam Tektwa Falanicha. He is not like that. He is not detached. He is not considering himself he's, that he is, he is doing out of duty. So he is, uh, he is not considering himself. He is considering himself to be the doer. So that's why he is entitled to this Ishtam Anishtam and Misra. Then if you ask if I am not the sole doer, then who is the doer? And why I am not supposed to consider myself to the doer? Then Lord Krishna is explaining, actually there are five factors of action. When you do something, there are five factors are there. So what are the five factors? He will explain now. Panchaitani Mahavaho Panchaitani Mahabaho Karanani Nibodhame Karanani Nibodhame Sankhe Kritante Proktani Sankhe Kritante Proktani Siddhaye Sarva Karmanam Siddhaye Sarva Karmanam So now, this nice thing, there are five factors of action. Don't think you are the only factor. No, don't consider yourself the sole doer. There are five factors that affect the fruits. Panchaitani Maham Karanani Sankhya Kritante Prata. It is all explained in the Sankhya system. He's telling me. In the Sankhya system, it is explained. So, I am going to explain these five factors. This time, he's telling the five factors that affect the results. Yeah, you can read this. Dheeraj Vibhuti Prabhu. Okay, we'll do one thing. We'll uh, take this section from uh, like next Thursday because the, here the discussion is having a twist from here till uh, some verses. So we'll take this section in next class. The five factors of our action. So uh, one question I can take. I have to rush for the class. Is Mandar Prabhu we can? Uh, so, Prabhuji, uh, now uh, in uh, last verse you told about that how sinful activities also affect, means when they are doing karma, so tyagis are also getting affected by that. Because they are doing some activities, so they will get result of that. Pious mm -hmm. result, impious result, they will also get. Yes. So, uh, now because we are now sadhana bhaktas and we are practicing duties, but it is not that our Bhakti is pure. So, we we may be in Tamsik Bhakti, Rasik Bhakti or Satvik Bhakti. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, so our results are governed by means uh, whatever sinful or pious results we get. 
So that is governed by what? How that that actually, our, our things are not falling in, in those ishtam and ishtam and ishtam and all these things. Our everything is taken by Bhakti Maharani. She takes care of Karmani Nirdhanti Kintu Cha Bhakti Bhajan Govindam Adi Kusuntam Bhajan. So depending upon the intensity of our devotional service, our our the kripa, the kripa element in our bhakti, because bhakti is basically kripa only. So all this kripa factor will, will take into our our actions and the kripa will decide how so you cannot very strictly you know judge the devotee's action actually. How what what will how much what point Bhakti Maharani will take care of all those things we never know. So it is all up to Bhakti Maharaj. So it is not so much as uh, the way the Niskam Karmi or this. For them, it is it is there. It is explained. Because they are, so there is no mercy element for them for them. It is all solely on, on left on to them. So for us means even the reactions are also a part to purify ourselves. Even that is called by Krishna and uh, Bhakti Devi. Yeah, that is that is purely under Bhakti Maharani's control. Yeah. Thank you so much, Puri. Okay. So we'll stop here, bro. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Sula Prabhupada ki. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Guruji. Hare Krishna.